Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including a ton of new info about the Cybertruck we've learned since its release Thursday, new software features coming to all Teslas, Tesla open sourcing patents, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, the Cybertruck. You probably have heard that this truck is released, but let's quickly review what its announced specs are. Many are disappointed by its price and top range, but they are currently planning to ship three specs of this truck. Rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, and Cyber Beast. Rear-wheel drive comes in at $60,990, will be available in 2025, gets a 250-mile range, and a 6.5 second 0-60. to 60. Then there is all-wheel drive at $79,990. This will start delivery in 2024, get an estimated range of 340 miles, a 4.1 second 0-60, to 60, top speed of 112 miles per hour, 600 horsepower, 7,435 pound-feet of torque, and 11,000 pounds of towing capacity. Lastly is what they call the Cyber Beast. It will also come in 2024, get a 320 mile range, 2.6 second 0 to 60, 130 mile per hour top speed, 845 horsepower, 10,296 pound feet of torque, and an 11,000 pound towing capacity. All of these specs are very impressive, but it's interesting to see some differing specs across other videos. In MKBHD's review, he outlines the top spec at 300 miles and a 0 to 60 as 2.7 seconds. So these numbers could change a bit with actual EPA certification and more. In any case, the main disappointment people have is that for rear-wheel drive, that range is what they originally announced, but it's $21,000 more than originally announced. For all-wheel drive, the range beats its original announcement, but comes in $30,090 more than announced in 2019. Then for the Cyber Beast, it misses the originally announced range by 180 miles, gets a faster 0 to 60, and comes in at $30,090 more expensive than announced in 2019. Then to get that full range, you'll need to add the range extender, still bringing it to 470 miles instead of 500, for an estimated $16,000 more. So in reality, Tesla is somewhat shipping that truck, but it'll cost $46,090 more than they told us. I honestly fully expected this, but tons of people are rightfully disappointed. Other specs that miss are payload capacity. In 2019, it was 3,500 pounds. Today, it's 2,500 pounds. And the tri-motor was supposed to be able to tow 14,000 pounds. Instead, it's 11,000. This truck isn't any cheaper than any other truck, especially at launch, but it does include a lot of fancy features. However, there is something to keep in mind. These are launch prices when Tesla is dealing with the cost of Cybertruck development and initial scaling. That's the toughest piece of the puzzle, and cost on their side will come down as they scale and optimize. I think this will absolutely be reflected in its price long term. They have done this with every single vehicle they have ever sold. Still disappointing, and it will be a long wait, but this could get at least a bit more reasonable with time. In any case, regarding features, a few great Cybertruck videos have been posted by people with access to the truck itself. In each one, they seem to show at least one detail that we didn't fully know about. MKBHD posted his video, and the first thing I noticed was that Tesla's backup shifters are located above you on the pillar for the rear view mirror. The rear seats fold up for a lot of storage space, and then when the rear view mirror is blocked by the tonneau cover being closed, which will honestly be a lot of the time for many drivers, the rear view pops up on the main center screen. It sits there at all times and can be moved to the right side of the screen instead. So that's Tesla's camera solution, rather than integrating one into the side mirror. Essentially, they're moving everything to that center screen. In practice, the steering wheel will only turn about 170 degrees. This is enabled through steer by wire, it means that once you're used to it, this will make for a pretty amazing experience over most cars out there. There's plenty more in this video, but one other cool thing is the fact that the glove box is a large slide-out drawer. You both open and close it from the screen. Tesla lists the top charging speed of the Cybertruck at 250 kilowatts, but executives apparently confirmed it to be 350 kilowatt capable once chargers are unlocked for that. This was confirmed in Top Gear's video with the Cybertruck. Then we found out about the range extender a bit more. The main pack is 123 kilowatt hours, then the range extender adds 50 kilowatt hours to that, and with the Cybertruck charging at 350 kilowatts, it will be able to charge from 15 to 85 percent in as little as 18 minutes. I assume that's charging the pack without the extender. Another great video to check out is Haggerty's, where they did some intense comparisons between the Cybertruck and others. Essentially, the top spec Cybertruck beats everyone else. And then Dirty Tesla did an in-depth walk around as well. He has one of the best shots of the sub-bed storage, which is fairly deep. Here it is from another angle with divider accessories that Tesla will be selling. A big thing that was announced after the event is the Cybertruck range extender. This is the method Tesla is taking for customers to be able to extend the truck's range for things like towing. 
The Cybertruck maxes at 123 kilowatt hours, and this adds 50 kilowatt hours, taking that 340 mile range in dual motor up to 470 plus miles, according to their website. This range extender takes up about a third of the truck bed, according to Elon Musk. The reason they seem to think that that's fine and the truck bed can lose some space is because this will be for towing purposes mostly. The thing to keep in mind here though is that this may not come for a bit, and that could also be delayed. The specs for it appear to have leaked though, showing a price at $16,000. It requires installation at a Tesla service center, and production is planned to begin in late 2024. That timeline makes sense since this truck is just starting to ship and won't truly be available for some time, but hopefully they actually do make that timeline. If they do, it would mean that customers getting a Cybertruck in late 2024 or 2025 could actually unlock a close to 500 mile range. At Tesla's event, they had a bunch of Cybertrucks synced for a light show, and it really shows off how much capability there is in all of the front lights, as well as the rear ones. As for the Cybertruck's bed, the original prototype was stainless steel, but they ended up going in a different direction. They include a bed liner and say, quote, the bed is made from sheet molded composite for added durability and eliminates the need to install an aftermarket bed liner. One of the most exciting features to hear about here, though, is PowerShare. This is Tesla's first implementation of bi-directional charging. The main things they outlined for this feature are power on the go, home outage protection, and charge other EVs. Quote, Tesla vehicles equipped with PowerShare technology have onboard electronics that unlock your battery's ability to provide power whenever you need it, wherever you are. Whether you need to power a construction site, pre-game taillight, another electric vehicle, or even your home during an outage, your Tesla vehicle with PowerShare has you covered. Of course, the Cybertruck is the first and only one equipped with this, but hopefully this will come to other cars soon. At home, the Cybertruck can power your home for over three days with zero noise or emissions at 11.5 kilowatts of continuous power. You can power devices with five built-in outlets and then charge other vehicles like this Model Y pictured here from its NEMA 1450 outlet. The home installation for PowerShare will require a universal wall connector, Tesla gateway, and an optional backup switch. On this page as well, they fully confirm the outlets in the Cybertruck. There are four 120 volt outlets, two in the cabin and two in the bed, all at up to 20 amps. The 240 volt outlet in the bed can do 40 amps. Then they say, add additional 120 volt or 240 volt outlets with PowerShare mobile connector and outlet adapters up to 32 amps. This image shows this off integrated with possibly the best possible electric backup system you could have at your home. This is a feature that is great to see on the Cybertruck and really is becoming standard across the board, so it kind of was required on Tesla's part. Now we just wait to see if they will bring it to their other cars. Tesla posted all of their videos from the event on X, on the relatively new Cybertruck account and their Tesla account, including the full truck pull video, where it beats tons of great trucks, multiple different angles of the Cybertruck towing a Porsche 911 while beating one at the drag strip, and much more. As for the accessories Tesla has announced and plans to offer for the Cybertruck, the Cybertruck Basecamp tent, as we saw on display at the event, costs $2,975. Tesla shared official photos of it, and it does integrate pretty well. Here it is unfolded on a matte black Cybertruck. Here's the view from the inside of it, and then what it looks like folded up. It fully integrates, mounts to the rails, and will still allow you to fully close the tonneau cover. As always, though, we don't know when this tent will actually ship. Above that, though, you can see the cargo crossbars installed, which will cost $800. Right here is another special accessory designed to sit under the rear seats. There is space under there, as you know, so this is a great way to optimize it and keep with the Cybertruck design. These are $250. They also show off the top-mounted light bar, but we don't have details for that one just yet. As far as wraps are concerned, Tesla is offering two different satin-colored wraps for the Cybertruck. They call it Cybertruck Color Paint Film, and it comes in two colors. Quote, wrap your Cybertruck in one of our premium color paint films, only available through Tesla, offered in satin black and satin white. It's self-healing, protects from scratches, is more environmentally friendly than traditional vinyl covers, and covers all of the stainless steel. This will be first available at two different service centers in California. As we expected with the Cybertruck, it's very safe. It doesn't roll over in a rollover test. The full frontal crash test doesn't have any cabin intrusion and side impact is taken very well. At the event, they had crash tested Cybertrucks on display and it was pretty impressive to see how well they hold up. Now the question is how the other car will look in a crash. The Cybertruck is Tesla's first with an 800 volt architecture and Ju Buglino detailed how this works when charging using 400 volt architecture. Quote, pack splits into two to charge natively on existing 400 volt charging infrastructure. No costly, lossy booster required. 
Obviously, they had to find an efficient way to move forward with charging and battery tech while still being able to use their thousands of superchargers. For now, that's most of the new details we have for the Cybertruck, but Tesla is offering a new discount on other Teslas. If you're a Cybertruck reservation holder, their email says, Cybertruck is here and your reservation is in the queue. While you await delivery of your Cybertruck, get $1,000 off the lease or purchase price of a new Tesla. This deal is only good until December 31st. In part, this is an incentive for the meantime, but it does make me wonder, if you're about to buy a Tesla anyway, could you put down a $250 fully refundable deposit on a Cybertruck and then get $1,000 off of a Tesla? Next up today, Tesla Hacker Green has revealed some more features that could show up in the next Tesla software update, version 2023.44. He spotted a piece of firmware code that references a front camera washer, which could be referring to a washer to hose off the lens on models that are equipped with a front bumper camera. That should apply to the refreshed Model 3, as well as the Model S and X that are expected to be getting some updates soon. It's possible those vehicles will automatically clean the camera on the front bumper when it senses dirt or rain droplets, similar to how auto windshield wipers work now. It's also possible, though, that Tesla will provide a button to clean the camera manually. There's space for that new button next to the wipers and sentry mode buttons and controls, but nothing is certain. It doesn't seem like it'll be its own app in the bottom row app launcher, though. Also, it's very likely this is already on the Cybertruck and is just something we haven't seen demoed. Another feature Green discovered appears to be available now, and it's a change to the seatbelt reminder system. They've updated the tone that's played for the seatbelt reminder in accordance with IIHS standards. According to Green, the new tone is more frequent and higher pitched. This is following a recent change that Tesla made to their vehicle's hazard lights, which also flash more frequently now when activated. Then for the Tesla app, version 4.27.3, Cybertruck support has been added. The update includes the 3D model of the truck that will be used in the app for Cybertruck owners. That app also enables a new feature in the location section of the app. When searching for a destination, you can now tap the pin to view more details about a particular location. That could include images, hours of operation, and other info. And this is now shown in the vehicle, so it's great that they're adding it to the app. As for Cybertruck wheel options shown in the app but not unveiled by Tesla yet, we know there will be at least two different kinds, a standard wheel and a premium wheel. The standard should be an 18-inch wheel with all-season tires. We've already seen this smaller wheel cover on some test vehicles. The other option is a 20-inch wheel with all-terrain tires and larger wheel covers. We've seen these on a ton of test vehicles and on the models that Tesla has been putting in showrooms and showed off at the event itself. The code also mentions premium wheels, but didn't include a picture. That could mean the performance variant might get different wheels that we haven't seen yet. I'm personally curious to see if the wheels that we haven't seen yet are what actually deliver that top 340 mile range. Next up today, Tesla has made an interesting decision regarding the Roadster. The original Tesla Roadster, as you may know, was Tesla's first vehicle with the first model delivered in 2008 to Elon Musk. Over the next four years, they made and delivered about 2,450 more. In 2017, they unveiled a refreshed Roadster that was to be released in 2020. That one, of course, has been delayed pretty much inevitably. The last update we've heard is that it's expected to enter production by the end of 2024, but I don't think anyone's actually expecting that. Now, seemingly out of nowhere, they've made the original Roadster design and engineering fully open source and made their R&D documents available to the public. This isn't exactly new behavior for Tesla, though. All their vehicle designs are semi-public. This is just the first time they've made one of their vehicles truly open source, and we now have access to a lot more information about the Roadster. On the Tesla service site for the Roadster, they wrote a note regarding the disclosed research and development documents. Quote, the information provided here is being provided as a courtesy to Roadster enthusiasts and was created during the design phase of the Roadster for research and development. It isn't manufacturer reference or repair and maintenance material and may not accurately reflect the actual production models or parts sold. They go on to say that anyone who uses this information they've provided is responsible for following all laws and safety protocols, and Tesla won't be responsible for any non genuine parts that are made. Basically, Tesla won't have anything to do with parts that are made using the documents they've released. The documents in question include designs for the battery monitoring board, HVAC controller, vehicle display system, and diagnostic software. It's not a comprehensive guide to building a Roadster, so it's unclear why Tesla selected this information to share, but it may be so that people can get their Roadsters repaired by third parties. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see my video from the Cybertruck unveil event itself and walking around the factory line, you can check that out linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.